Friday morning at 2.41 a.m. at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodo and of Grand Admiral Dernit signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Forces. Hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday the 8th of May. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing. We stayed in London during the war, during the Blitz. It wasn't easy, but none of us complained. Every one of us knew someone who was off fighting, fighting to save Britain, to make things better for all of us. time ago now. People forget times were hard after the war. But we all thought things would get better. They had to, didn't they, after all that? For the next generation. For all the kids born during the war and just after. In our house, we got most of our news by radio. And now, having come into operation the most comprehensive system of social security ever introduced into any country, we may be proud that Britain, which has given the lead in so many things to the world, is still in the forefront of social advance. The kids knew the future. Everyone knows the future's coming Just can't stop it moving on all over the world Any rhythm going down so Put on a brand new groove in the shoes When the beat revolution comes Gonna change the world with the boys and the girls We're having a do today A family celebration Oh, here they come Okay, selfie oh, no. Yeah, ready? Lots of gaps in the family photos these days, where people used to be. Where we're standing, this is where I grew up. This is the terraced house where I was born. And my five sisters, and my two brothers. How we all squashed in there, I do not know. Up there was a small parade of shops. Mr Jones, who sold sweets and newspapers. Mr Wilkins who sold fruit and veg, Ted Davis, who ran an electrical shop, Mr Hope, who had a hardware store that sold posh coffee. Oh, yes, we had posh coffee. Couldn't afford it, mine, but yes, posh coffee. There were two pubs, one up there, the Clissold, one down there, the Alexandra. A garage, a bakery, a police station, and down there, at the end of the street next to the fire station, was the primary school. We all went there. One after the other. Us girls, then years later, my little brothers, Raymond and David. Oh, and just up the road there was the bomb site, where a V2 rocket landed in what turned out to be the final air raid of the war. The boys used to play cowboys and Indians on the bomb site. This must be the first time the boys have been together in years. Right, Bobby, yes. That's my son, Good to see Terry. You, mate. <laughs> Been a long time. And that's my sister Rini's boy, Bobby. 
His dad was the Canadian soldier that came over here during the war. Raymond and David, my little brothers. Look at them. My boys. I love my boys. Just down here, opposite our house, was an alleyway that led to a world of mystery, otherwise known as the Village Green. I miss the Village Green. And all the simple people, I miss the village green. The church, the clock, the steeple, I miss the morning dew, fresh air and Sunday school. On the other side of the village green were the allotments. My dad used to love his allotment. He always used to say, I like my football on a Saturday, roast beef on Sundays, all right. This is my garden of England. Dad used to grow everything. Potatoes, carrots, runner beans, rhubarb, and flowers, sweet peas, roses. He loved his flowers. That's why he called me Rose. This is my street, and I'm never gonna leave it. I'm always gonna stay here If I live to be 99 And everyone used to grow their own veg then. If Mum wanted something for dinner, she'd just ask Dad. Got any spuds? Might have. Rose is bringing Arthur around for Sunday lunch. I'd better get digging then. What do you make of him, this Arthur? Seems all right. Mm. Bit ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arthur swept me off my feet. He was so handsome, film star good looks. I always used to think he looked a bit like Richard Todd. Arthur was born just a plain simple man in a plain simple working man's position. Though the world was hard and his ways were set, he was young and he had so much ambition. He was a lot freer back then, when we first got together after the war. Come on. Before the world got to him. Where are we going? Pictures. Escape the world for a couple of hours. What's on? Oh, David living in something or other. <laughs> we used to go to the pictures all the time. Come on, You could stay all day if you wanted to. It was our favourite form of escape. When we got married, we only moved a couple of streets away from Mum and Dad. Turn left out the front door, past the bakery. Right at the fire station. Straight Straight on on right. right. 50 yards on your left. And you're there. Our Our home. home. I wanted to stay close to family. I think that got up Arthur's nose a bit. He wanted to get away. At the time, my aspiration was to get a sewing job. I spend all my time sewing, darning. But Arthur had bigger ambitions for me, for all of us. Our little house. Two up, two down. Every room in this house has a memory. Come on, I'll show you round. The front room. Arthur made that cabinet. It's where we kept our memorabilia. From coronations and royal weddings and the like. Arthur called it his empire collection. A Queen Elizabeth II coronation cup. King George VI Queen Elizabeth plate. A King George V with Queen Mary Bowl. Bit chipped. So proud of it, he was. Arthur had been promised there would be a job waiting for him with this top engineering company after the war. Well, they gave it to a younger man. He felt really let down. One of the forgotten army. He got a job at Henderson's, where they made Tupperware. I had a quite impressive collection of Tupperware. Arthur was always very conscientious, worked hard. After a while... They made him a foreman. He always used to say... Plastics are the future. Everyone knows the future's coming. That picture on the wall over there, that's a photograph of Stuart, Arthur's older brother, RAF pilot. He was killed on his way back from a mission at the end of the war. I don't think Arthur ever got over it. He idolised his brother. The sun lies in a field 
Someone has killed some other son today. Head blown up by some soldier's gun. While all the mothers stand and wait. Some mother's son is coming home today. Some mother's son ain't got no Arthur always wanted to be a pilot like his brother, but he had bad eyesight so he had to work on the ground crew. All his life, Arthur had to accept second best. Next, the kitchen. Small, isn't it? But, well, this is where Terry, our son, was born. Let's have a look upstairs. This is the back bedroom where Terry slept. When he was a bit older, he used to share it with his uncle, with my little brother. Raymond. I used to love listening to Raymond playing his guitar. Ray! David used to come round quite a bit. Terry! Coming! He still lived with Mum and Dad and my sisters. Bobby's here! Ray! We're coming! David loved living in a crowded house. So what are we going to do? I'm going to record something. Yes. Let's get set up. But most days he'd come over to see Raymond and Terry and record bits and pieces of songs on our Grundig tape recorder. They even started their own skiffle group. Bobby was the drummer. Terry used to pluck away on a tea chest bass. Oh, I wish I knew what had happened to all those tapes. One, two, three, four. I took my baby home. She said, don't you leave me alone. Only one more room, the front bedroom. This is where Arthur told me something that would change my life forever. Oh, and I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm forgetting someone. Julie, same age as the boys, used to live next door. (laughs) I think all the boys were a bit in love with her, especially Terry and Raymond. Not that any of them knew what love was. Used to make me laugh how they all used to get around Julie. She's out there. Julie? Yes. Oscar in. You ask her in. Tell her we're doing a recording. I'll go. Ray, when you chat up a girl, you've got to have a good opening line. What do I say? Hello, darling. Hello, darling. No (laughs) way. Hello, darling. See, see, Terry's got the neck. (laughs) Will you teach me? Me and you, Ray, we'll be like film stars. Yes. Mm. Problem is, Terry's dad looks like a film star, whereas you, Raymond, well, you just look like your dad. (laughs) The boys used to have their own imaginary radio station. They'd record a broadcast on our Grundig and then play it back to the family. Bits of news, bits of songs, all sorts. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello. <laughs> we were, um, we're just doing a recording. You want to listen? Yeah, great. Ready? Right. Recording. Three, two, one. Welcome to r- 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 Rocking Radio Ramona. <laughs> Today, in the news, the sewers crisis. There's a crisis in Suez. <laughs> and now, a new song. Everyone knows the future's coming. You just can't stop it moving on all over the world. A new rhythm going down so. Put on a brand new shoes when the beat revolution comes revolution. gonna change the world with the boys and the girls gonna change the world with the boys Shut that 
bloody racket. We're going to change the world, Dad. Yeah. Oh. Couldn't change your underpants. Oh, oh, hey, I'd like to see this lot make the sacrifices my generation made. Hey, what they ended their school service, I'll never know. Get out. Go on, Scarpa. Sorry, boys. Here, Bobby, give us some of this. What's wrong? Oh, bloody Henderson. Mr. Henderson? No, his son. Oh. Old man Henderson's put him in charge of production. Talks down to me like he's some kind of sergeant major. Yes, sir, no, sir. Where do I go, sir? What do I do, sir? What do I say? I tell you what the problem is today. Some people just don't know their place. I should say so, Papa. gave me a dressing down in front of the other blokes for letting an ex-RAF man take time off to see the doctor without asking his permission. His permission? Hey, what did he do during the war? Sit home playing his bloody Hornby train set while his dad made a fortune selling chaff to the MOD? Oh, I had enough. Yes, sir, no, sir. Please let me die, sir. I think this life is a We can go for a drink with Mum and Dad later. Oh, cry. Oh, don't be like that, Arthur. Oh, just keep your mum away from me. Arthur was a bit scared of my mum. I don't want you to get the impression that Arthur was in a bad mood all the time. He could be fun, especially on weekends when we went for a drive. We never used to go anywhere in particular, or at least that was what I thought. Secretly, though... He was touring the suburbs, looking for our dream home. But I didn't know that at the time. As far as I was concerned, we just got in the car. Rosie! Terry! Ray! And went for a drive, like lots of people did. Scramble! Scramble! Arthur loved his car. He used to sit in the driver's seat like he was in command. Like he was sitting in the cockpit of a Spitfire. Flare release controls. Check. Airspeed indicator. Check. Picnic. Check. Engines on. Maximum revs. Here we go. Seems like all the world is fighting. Up to Potter's Bar We won't be home late 
It's not very far, so take a drive with me. Yeah, take a drive with me. It's a building site. It's a new build. A what? Stevenage. Stevenage? Stevenage, South of Itching Hearts. Boys, why don't you go and have a look around? At a building site? Have a look. Come on, Terry. I'm not moving to Stevenage, Arthur. Come on, Rosie. Look at all the green. I don't like the countryside. Dad's allotment is enough for me. It won't be the countryside, will it? Not when all the houses are built. Well, what about Raymond? We can't just sling him out. I want you to think about it. Come on. Let's have a look. We trudged around the building site. Does Arthur really want you to come and live out here? Don't worry, Ray. I'm not leaving London. Arthur got in a bad mood. And it got worse. On the way home... What is it? We got a flat. Oh. Mm. Have we got a spare? There is the spare. Oops. I, enough of your cheek. But what are we going to do? Well, I'll thumb a ride. Call the AA. Stick your thumb out, Dad. Man. They, they always used to stop. Hey, when I was in uniform, used to stop straight away. Couldn't do enough for you then. Nowadays. Hey, time was. An AA man would stop what he was doing and salute you when he saw a member drive past. Couldn't give up monkeys these days. God, my brother died for this country. People just don't care anymore. Whatever happened to the Dunkirk spirit? What was it Mr Churchill said, Dad? Mr Churchill said... Mr Churchill said... What about Mr. Beaverbrook, Dad? Mr. Beaverbrook said, We gotta save our tin. And all the garden gates and empty cans are gonna make us win. What was it Churchill said again? In the street. Never in the field of human conflict, there's so much old to so few. Cause they have made our British Empire a better place for me and you. And this is our finest hour. Yeah, what did Montgomery say, Dad? Well, Miss Montgomery says, and Miss McBatten says, we gotta find the bloody battle. What about Vera Lee? As Vera Lee would say, we'll meet again someday. But all the sacrifices we must make before the end. Oh, bloody walk. Mayday! Mayday! Bang here at nine o'clock! Got him in my sights! Let him have it! Got him! didn't get home till gone midnight. The boys were asleep in the back. All the smells that came from such innocent little boys. Arthur kept going on about Stevenage. He was desperate to get away, but I didn't want to move. Not all the way out there. I wanted to be near Mum and Dad, my sisters, family. It took me nearly six months to talk him out of it. You'll regret it. It was about then that Mr Macmillan applied to join the European Economic Community. Arthur was not happy. One day, 
We were in Mr Jones's news agents. Arthur's boss, Mr Henderson, oh, was in Mr. there. Mr Henderson. Oh dear. Yeah. Good morning, Arthur. My wife, Rose. Morning, Rose. Mr Henderson. Your newspapers, Arthur. Oops. Are these your boys? Just Terry here. This is his cousin, Bobby. Oh. Raymond and David are his uncles. Uh, and they're a bit young to be uncles, aren't they? Yeah, my wife goes with my life's <laughs> Quite a spread of ages. Yeah. I see. Mr Jones and I were just discussing Mr Macmillan's decision to apply for membership of the European Economic Community. Arthur. Bloody nonsense. You think it's nonsense, do you? We should get going. Arthur? I, I, it'll be a national disaster. Oh, strong words. We'll what rights he got to play with our sovereignty? He's our Prime Minister. Hey, yeah, well, I never voted for him. Arthur. Hey, United States of Europe? Do me a favour. Well, would you say, then, that we should go with the Treaty of Rome and have a looser association? Oh, why, we would want any association with that. Lots of mystery to me. Influence, Arthur. We need influence. Why? Because if we don't have influence, we will be presented with all the economic difficulties of trading with Europe without any of the benefits. Exactly. Joining the EEC will allow us to expand our markets. If we don't become a member, we'll live to regret it. It's not just about economics, it's about freedom. Freedom? Oh, you're confident we can meet the Soviet threat alone. Hey, well, why not? Hey, we've always stood up to bullies, haven't we? Strength in numbers. My brother died for this country, not for some... Very European get rich quick club. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah, tell yeah, these yeah. children to be quiet? Yeah. Shut up. We don't need the EEC. We need to build a new Europe. No, you don't know what you're talking about. I beg your pardon. going to bring this up outside work, but now seems as good a time as any. I'm going to add an extra night shift. You'll be on it. Understood? Yes, Mr Henderson. Are you all right, Arthur? Bloody night shift. Who does he think he is? Hey, if it carries on like this, I'm emigrating. Don't talk to I'm serious. None of us could have seen what was coming next. I was at home. A sad day it was. It's hard to tell this story. Bobby's mum, my sister Reenie, came round the house. She had a present for Raymond, a brand new guitar. Thank you, Reenie. I was upstairs. I've often wondered what they said to each other that day. Perhaps, Ooh, that's a lovely song. What's it called? I don't know. What's it about? Here, London, where we're from. Oh, I've always loved the River Thames. 
I'm going that way tonight. I'm getting the tube to Waterloo, then I'll walk across the river to go dancing at the Lyceum. I'll never know what she really said, not now. But if there was one thing I would have loved her to have said, it would have been something like, you kids are the future. Right for me, right for our generation, so you can live for all the tomorrows we'll never have. Terry meets Julie Waterloo Station Every Friday night But I don't Feel afraid As long as I gaze on Waterloo Sunset I am in paradise That night, Rini went out dancing. She had a heart attack, right there, on the dance floor. She'd always had a weak heart. She'd been warned about doing too much, but she was irrepressible. We were devastated. The whole family, poor Bobby. The boys were so good with him. As long as they gaze on Waterloo sunset They are in paradise Right, Bobby. Anything you want, just ask, yeah? yeah. We'll look after you, mate. Don't worry, Bobby. I'm here for you. <laughs> All of you. I'll always look after my boys. Protect you. Nothing will ever split me up from my boys. Thanks, Auntie. I meant it and all. It wasn't long after that we were listening to the radio. In a statement to the Commons this afternoon... The Prime Minister said that the UK's application to join the EEC had been vetoed by President de Gaulle. Good job. But that he had not given up hope of joining the EEC at a later date. Oh, hey, dear. And today's weather. Cold and cloudy with occasional showers. And now, a special announcement. This is the voice of the Commonwealth calling with opportunities abroad. Ten pounds takes you to Australia. Australia is the land of golden sunshine, golden beaches, and golden opportunities. And you and your family can share in Australia's growing prosperity. Under the assisted passage scheme, adults travel for ten pounds, and youngsters under the age of 19 travel free. For more information, contact... Uh, what are you doing? There's nothing on. What will you do here, eh? Why? Opportunities are available in all walks of life in Australia. So if the young, if you're healthy, why don't get a boat and come to Australia? It's a commercial. Where's an opportunity? Australia, Arthur. Why not? I can't leave Mum and Dad, you know Look, that. we deserve better than this. Somewhere we don't have to pander to the class system. Somewhere a working man is respected. Somewhere it don't rain all the bloody time. The sun, the sand. The spiders. A oh, bucket the spiders. Imagine it, Rosie, me and you. Not a care in the world. What would we live on? Fresh air. <laughs> the sun. The sand, the sea, and I'm gonna spend my time drawing pictures in the sand for you. And I'm gonna name the time, and I'm gonna name a rendezvous. Sitting by the sea, sipping at my tea, drawing pictures in the sand. 
sending messages to you. Suffocating here. Oh, Arthur. I can't do it anymore. It's important to keep the family together. Why? Well, where do we turn if things go wrong? Who'd be there to help us if we, if we were stuck somewhere thousands of miles from home? Oh, where are you going? Oh, out. He wasn't happy. But what could I do? I couldn't just up sticks and move halfway around the world. Boys carried on oblivious. Now what's up? It sounds horrible. Hmm. Dad said they might reintroduce conscription. What? Why? As a Cuba. Yeah, we are the right age. I'm not going in the army. I thought we managed to miss it. Anyway, I've got a limp. <laughs> Probably all die anyway if there's a war between America and Russia. Yeah. That's all right then. You ready to record, Dave? Yeah. Three, two, one. Recording. Welcome to r- 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 Rocking Radio Ramona. R- Today, in the news, blockade, ultimatum to Khrushchev, move those missiles. President Kennedy last night announced a full-scale blockade of Cuba to stop a build-up of Russian missiles there. Uncle Arthur had to have three stitches in his right hand after punching the radiogram. Uh, why did he punch the radiogram, Blue Motto? Because the BBC broadcast a speech by the new Prime Minister, Sir Alec Douglas Hume. The uh... Is that what you were supposed to do, Dad, is it? Apparently. And at number one on the hit parade, it's Telstar by the Tornadoes. Raymond and David started a new group. Bobby wasn't sure if he wanted to be in it anymore. He wanted to be a chef, but he was a terrible cook. Terry wasn't really a good enough bass player, so he'd become their sort of road manager. He was really committed to the group, but he had to finish school first. He'd started to do well at school. He was good at sums. They made him head boy. (laughs) He was clever. College material, one of his teachers said. I was so proud. He even had a proper girlfriend. Me and Julie are going to the pictures. You want to come? I thought I was going with you. Not stopping you. Do I look like a gooseberry? A bit. <laughs> ha ha. See you later. Bye, Raymond. Bye. It was difficult for Raymond. I think he was a bit jealous. I wasn't. I had my eye on Daisy from the grocer's shop. She fancied me. But it was more complicated than that. Him and Terry were very close. They used to do everything together until Julie came along. Like brothers we were. I think it was probably what made Raymond decide to move out. I'm moving in with some mates from art college. Times were moving on. Bobby joined the Navy. That was his new family now. Terry started to lose interest in school. He wanted to be out on the road with Raymond and David. And Arthur started going on about Australia again. Terry! Rosie, here you go. Have a look at this, eh? 
Adelaide. Here, look. Mm -hmm. We'll be living just here. It's even called Elizabeth after the Queen. Mm -hmm. Mediterranean climate. Sea in one direction, mountains in the other. And I'm going to spend my time <laughs> drawing pictures in the sand for you. Excellent employment prospects, excellent wages, low taxes, and look, parks, hospitals, places to explore. Opportunities are available in all walks of life in Australia. So if you're young and if you're healthy, why not get a boat and come to Australia? Well. It sounds... I could see that he needed to dream. So I went along with it. Sort of. Yes. Good. Terry? I want to stay here. Oh, here? Hey, look at this, see? Look at all the misery and crime and, and the weather. I told Ray and Dave I'd be their tool manager. I'm the only one who knows about electrics. Oh, they won't get anywhere. It's just a hobby. I'm not going, and that's that. Oi, you get back here. Terry? Why? What's the point? <laughs> Bloody pathetic. Perrier. Don't worry, Terry. He won't go through with it. Arthur had a chip on his shoulder. But I don't know. Then one night, he brought me some roses. And I thought, how lovely. They're from your dad, not me. He took the roses, one by one, and started crushing them in the palm of his hand. And I'm going to spend my time Arthur? drawing pictures in the sand for you. Arthur, no, look, your hands are oh, bleeding. Oh, God, I am useless. No. It should have been me that died. Oh. Stuart always did better than me. No. He was the golden son. It should have been... I've, I've let you down, no. Rosie. I've let the family down. I've turned into this oh, horrible, bitter human being. No, Arthur. I, I am not worth the effort. I felt torn between keeping my promise to the boys and staying loyal to Arthur. But I never forgot my wedding vows, for better or for worse. And in the end, the decision was taken out of my hands. Rosie? I was changing the sheets in the front bedroom. Oh, yes, darling. I've, um, I've handed in my notice. Oh, well, yeah, oh, hey, you should have seen Henderson's face. But don't worry, I've got another job. Oh, well, good. I'm, <laughs> I'm pleased. I know how much you hate that place. Yeah. Where? What? The, the job, where is it? Oh, Adelaide. Yeah, I've paid a passage. I'm going in the new year. You, me and Terry. It's all sorted. I was stunned. I couldn't speak. Yep. Yeah, I'll have a word with him, with Terry, when he gets home from school. All right. Poor Terry. He was so upset. The whole family were shell-shocked. It was the first time anyone had broken away. And it was... Well, I didn't know it then, but... It was the end of an era. Good afternoon, and welcome to... r r r r in Radio Ramona. Rawr. This is a live outside broadcast from Southampton Docks. I'm handing over to our reporters on the spot. Dave and Bobby... Arthur, you're about to sail halfway around the world so you can live with kangaroos. How do you feel about that? Don't be daft. Rosie, your love of spiders is legendary. Are you looking forward to making some new spider friends down under? No. 
Terry, rumour has it that you've taken the door down from your outside toilet and that you intend to use it as a surfboard, is that correct? Well, only one thing for it. Goodbye, goodbye. Oh, I've got you, baby dear. Hey, that's enough, Mom. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my sad duty to inform you that this has been the final broadcast from r r r rucking Radio Ramona. Due to circumstances beyond our control, we are now coming off the air. Goodbye. Oh, sod. Yes? We've got a gig in red car tonight. Let's do a runner. You got any idea how much I'd like to take you up on that offer? Not going to be the same without you. Here. What? The one and only recording of the last ever broadcast from r r r r in Radio Ramona. Thanks. The music will follow you all over the world. Australia, here we come. Opportunities are available in all walks of life in Australia. So if you're young, if you're healthy, why not get a boat and come to Australia? Send us a boomerang. You send it straight back. Promise. No one hesitates at life or beats around the bush in Australia. Keep your hands off them didgeridoos. So if you're young and if you're healthy, why not get a boat and come to Australia? never going to end. I can hardly even say it, but <sighs> me and Terry cried all the way to Australia. And when we did finally get there, to Outer Harbour, we had to live in a migrant hostel until our immigration status was cleared. It was like an army barracks. Bunk beds, roll calls. I hated it. Terry hated it. Arthur hated it. There was this Sergeant Major type who really seemed to have it in for him. Roll up your swag. I beg your pardon? It's true, some of these pumps can't even speak Australian. Make your bed. Yes, sir. No, sir. Where do I go, sir? What do I do, sir? What do I say? I was so happy to get out of that place. 
made our way to Elizabeth. It was hot. I was sweating from places I never even knew you could sweat from. This is it. It was so modern. Not like back home. All clean and new. We had a garden. A big one, front and back. Oh, Arthur. What did I tell you? Terry? It's all right. We're Australian now. No, we're not. Yes, we are. If we're going to make a go of it here, we need to be more Aussie than the Aussies. You remember that? A new home. A new start. For all of us. We bought carpets, furniture. We didn't have much shipped over except... Oh, dear. My empire collection. His cups and saucers all broken. And his picture of Stuart. The glass in the frame all smashed. Arthur put a brave face on it. We can't expect to ship things halfway round the world and for everything to come out unscathed. He wasn't going to let it get to him. He was determined to make it work. I used to write home quite a lot. Dear Mum and Dad, it's just the same as home here, only hotter. Arthur started work at the Kelvinator factory. Terry got a position at a surveyor's office. And I got a job as a dressmaker. We just got on with it. I used to look forward to getting letters from home. Airmail, of course. It was a lot cheaper than sending a proper letter. Dear Rose, just a few words to let you know we're all well. Your dad's poor rheumatic back has been playing him up, but apart from that, everyone is doing fine. Raymond and Dave's group are doing really well. They were on the telly last week. Terry was missing the boys. And every time he heard how well the group were doing, he used to get upset. He must have felt he should have been a part of it. Arthur wasn't very happy at work, but he didn't like talking about it. He used to go out with the blokes sometimes. All right, lads. They weren't very friendly. Arthur still used to tag along, though. My round? (sighs) That bloody time, mate. (laughs) Then... Before you knew it... Happy birthday! birthday. It was Terry's 18th birthday. And as fate would have it, this family moved in next door with a daughter, the spitting image of Julie. Her name was Sally. Hello, darling. It wasn't long before they were an item. Meanwhile, Arthur had been made foreman. He was pleased, but it meant longer hours, more responsibility. And sometimes the men didn't want to listen to him. One time he had to reprimand one of the men who was really popular. And the other men made Arthur's life a real misery after that. Made a point of not even inviting him out for a drink. He used to sit at home on his own. He said he wasn't bothered, but he was. You could tell. Terry left the job at the surveyor's office and went to work for this company making aluminium window frames. He still used to play around with electrics in his spare time. Oh, blast! Blast! I think he knew there would have been more opportunities for him if we'd stayed in England. But he was like his dad. He was never going to admit it. Then, oh dear me, at that time in Australia, they had national service. Not for everyone. They used to have this lottery draw based on your date of birth. If your name came out, you had to do two years in the Australian Army. Guess what? Yes, Terry got called up. Arthur was proud. His boy was a proper Australian now. I was mortified. They were sending Australian troops to all kinds of dangerous places. Look after yourself, mate. I'll be all right. (laughs) Bye, darling. I love you. Love you, Mum. Oh, my giddy aunt. I hated it. The worry. Every minute, every day, our little boy. More bloody walls. And meanwhile, back home in England, Raymond and David having all that success. We settled into a kind of routine, Arthur at work, me sewing, watching the news, listening to the radio, worried sick day and night. Until finally, finally... By now, he even sounded Australian. How's the old cobber? Oh, don't you ask him? Welcome, own boy. <laughs> <laughs> Terry. <laughs> All right, Sal. I was so happy he was back. We had a barbecue to celebrate. The neighbours came round. It was nice, but 
It wasn't like home. Not my real home. I missed it. The people, the places. The pool was so strong. Homesickness. And it was a sickness. I tried to hide it from Arthur, but he knew. Some days everything reminded me of home. A flower. Something someone said, something on the telly. That day, at the barbecue, Terry made an announcement. I just wanted to say that uh, me and Sally have decided to get engaged. I travelled all over the world to get engaged to the girl next door. It was a lovely moment. I was a bit sad. I would have loved Mum and Dad and the boys to have been there. Mind you, even if we'd known, they wouldn't have been able to come. Australia's a long way, and it cost a lot of money to travel that far. I remember later that afternoon, I went into the house and took out this shoebox where I kept all my old letters and postcards and just sat there, looking through everything. The kids came in from the garden, wanted to know what I was looking at. I found a postcard the other day A faded photograph taken of a cold winter's game And all the children that gathered round Asked what the place was on the faded card that I had found It was a city I used to know and as a child when it was Christmas I played in the winter snow It was the homeland I left behind A better future waiting in the new world That we hope to find Across the oceans Far south we came And left the country that somehow We knew we'd never see again And read the message that you wrote On the reverse of that same postcard Always seemed to give me hope Though time will pass us and fade from view I hope sometimes you think of me Because I'll always think of you And to the children who gathered round I said this is the place that long ago We all called London Town Postcard from London's romantic views Only serves to keep reminding me of Raymond and David's group were going from strength to strength. Hit records, tours. Terry used to tell everyone... They're my uncles, except Dave is younger than me. He was very proud. We all were. Terry would have liked to have been part of it, but, well, we were settled now. Meanwhile, Raymond and David travelling all over the world. Europe, America. And, yes, eventually, we got a letter... They were coming here to Australia. They're coming here? That's what it says. Melbourne, Perth, Sydney, Adelaide. I don't believe it. Raymond says he'll get us VIP tickets. I better tell Sally. They were coming to Australia. My boys. Here they are. All the way from England. It's the Kings! What a night that was. Fantastic. We stood at the back of the stage and the audience going wild for my boys, my lovely boys, up there on the stage in front of all those people. Terry and Sally jumping up and down, me tapping my feet. I couldn't stop grinning. I'd never seen anything like it. Even Arthur was smiling. I think deep down, he was really proud. Next day, they came round our house. It was so lovely to see them. 
but it was different. Not like it was before. They were stars. We were all a bit tongue-tied with our own flesh and blood. Darth, really. But it felt a bit uncomfortable. It was hard to know what to say. Want a beer? There was a great gig last night. <laughs> Thanks. You look just like this girl we used to know back home. Oh. No, mate. <laughs> yes, mate. Well, I can't believe I'm here with you guys. <laughs> yeah. This is a great place, Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah. Mm. Well, it's lovely of you to come. <laughs> oh, we'll miss seeing you for the world. Oh. <laughs> Here, how about we jump in the car? I'll show you around. Great. Yeah. Scramble. <laughs> 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 I think we might be a bit past all that, Dave. Yes, yeah, all right. Come on. Arthur drove the boys around Adelaide. St Peter's Cathedral, Elder Park... Victoria Square, all the way to Mount Lofty and back. Well, better than grey old England, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you miss home? Oh. Yeah, when are you coming back home, Rosie? Oh, I live here now, thank you, David. Best thing we ever did, coming here. Are you sure? Hey. Like, what are you talking about? Nothing. Oh, come on. Hey, if you've got something to say, oh, you know, let him go on, you say it. Just, well, you know, yeah. Moving all the way out here. Shame. Broke oh. mum and dad's hearts. Don't say hey, that. Now, look. Look, you've upset Rosie. Sorry, Rosie. This is the right place for us. For you, maybe. For my family. Australia's a fantastic country. I never said it wasn't. I'm just saying it's not like home. This is home. It's fantastic. <laughs> this isn't your country, Terry. I fought a war for this country. Yeah, where yeah. have I heard that before? Fine. Oh, 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 trust you to take his side. I'm not taking his side. Please! Oh, God. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rosie. You should know better. I know, I know. Sweetheart, I'm sorry. Boys, 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 I, look, look. I, I didn't want to break the family up. Your family's wonderful. But there's so many of you. It, it, it was exhausting, right? <clears throat> we, we're still connected. Yeah. Anyway, hey, we can write. Hey, we, we'll always be connected by the music you <laughs> made. That, that's what's so wonderful about this. You're the ones holding the family together now, mm. eh? And, and look, I always really liked what you did. <laughs> That's the way I died. You didn't say, cos... Uh, I had... Uh, look, it, look, England wore me out. All right. Perhaps you boys can make it better again. But my generation, they've... Oh, they've had... Oh, Arthur. Oh. I'm sorry, Arthur. I'm sorry, Rosie. Terry... Sally. I love you, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you too, stupid. Come in. Oh. I'll miss you, mate. Miss you too, right? It's just... Family's important to me. Oh, yeah, me and all. It hasn't been easy for any of us. Yeah. But things are different now. Coming here wasn't easy, but it was the right decision. And Dad... <laughs> I love you for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It hurt, but in some ways, I was glad those things had been said. It was on all our minds. Families, eh? Afterwards, when things had calmed down, we actually had quite a nice evening. Where do you get your ideas from? It's funny you should ask that. What do you mean? We've just been recording some songs for a new album. Oh, what's it called? Arthur. Arthur and the decline and fall of the British Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You've written an album about my dad. Sort of. Now that you've found your paradise This is your kingdom to command You can go outside and polish your car Or sit by the fire in your Shangri-La your slippers and sit by the fire you've reached your top and you just can't get any higher you're in your place 
Raymond and David left, things got back to normal, back to routine. The years passed quietly enough. Then I started to notice sometimes Arthur was getting quite sick. He lost his appetite, started losing weight and he had this cough that sometimes just wouldn't stop. I kept going on at him to see the doctor. Then one day... I don't want to worry anyone. So I kept quiet. He ended up in hospital. And not long after, he was gone. My Arthur. I was lost. He was buried in Adelaide. Of course, it was too far for anyone to come to the funeral. I got a lovely letter from Dad. Dear Rosie, I was so sorry to hear about Arthur. It must have been very difficult for you and Terry. He was a good man, Rosie. He always tried to do the best for his family. I wish I could have been there for you. If you need anything, just let us know. I was glad he said that about Arthur. At the end of his letter, he wrote... When you were born, you symbolised England to me. Not a daisy, nor a lily, but a rose. My rose. I thank my lucky stars for my rose. Here in my garden of England. And now, well, here we are. In a new century. So much has changed. Or has it? I don't know. Right. Come on, you lot. Let's get going. The do yeah, my family's having right today right. is for my sister Dolly's 90th birthday. Raymond and David are here. Terry and Sally have flown in all the way from Australia. Bobby's here too, with his wife and family. Yeah. Terry's got an urn with him. He's going to our old house, where he was born, to scatter my ashes. It was my last wish. In the end, I wanted to come home. Or the Decline and Fall of the British Empire by Ray Davis and Paul Syrup. Arthur was played by Lee Ross. Rose, Rosie Cavaliero. Ray, Stephen Lloyd. Dave, Mark Noonan. Terry, Ben Norris. Bobby, Arthur Hughes. Julie and Sally, Emerald O'Hanrahan. Mr Henderson, David Holt. Mum, Karen Spicer. And Dad and Mr Jones, Wayne Norman. All the other parts were played by members of the cast. All songs were written 
by Ray Davis and performed by Ray Davis, Lee Ross, Rosie Cavaliero, Mark Noonan, Ben Norris, Stephen Lloyd, Arthur Hughes, Wayne Norman, Harvey Brough, Arthur and the Emigrants and the Kinks. The director was Karen Rose. The producers were Karen Rose and Ray Davis. Arthur, or the decline and fall of the British Empire, was a sweet talk production for BBC Radio 4.